Okay, guys. We'll continue with the the determination of an acceleration of a vehicle. And before we actually go to finding the acceleration of a vehicle, let us see what are all the parts which actually accelerate along with the vehicle. Of course, we know that if this is the vehicle body, if these are the wheels, engine, clutch, gearbox, and then you have a okay, drive shaft, a differential. All this actually accelerates forward by the same because every point in this vehicle, every point in this vehicle will have a forward acceleration AH. Every point, even hand sitting on a vehicle will actually have a forward acceleration. It's every point. It is the reason why we use the equation F is equal to MA and we can say A is equal to F by M. Higher the force, more the acceleration. Higher the mass, lower the acceleration, we do that. Along with this, we have one more resistance. Right now, yesterday we said, okay, yesterday we said that if you try to calculate the acceleration this way, the answer may come wrong by almost 25%. Because when a vehicle wants to accelerate, the engine will speed up and this gearbox components will speed up, this drive line components will speed up. And this axle, the half shafts will speed up, the wheels will speed up. Now, to simply rotate a fan from zero speed to some speed, you need some torque. Okay, so therefore, while accelerating, if you are trying to find the acceleration like this, if you if you wanted to find this FX, what is this FX, guys? Can you tell me what is this FX? What force is this? F stands for force, everybody knows. Force. F stands for the tractive force. And I call it as X because it is in the forward direction. Okay. So what was the relation between, I mean, now what is the formula for FX? I think we have seen this in the previous classes also. Huh? I think we know that torque in a wheel is equal to radius of the wheel multiplied by force in the wheel. Force into radius gives you this. This force is nothing but the tractive force. If you want the tractive force, Ft, let us write it as Ft to avoid confusion. So Ft is equal to Tw by Rw. Okay. Now, how do we know the, how do you know the value of Tw? Where does the torque come from? The torque comes from the engine. Engine. Okay. Now the torque comes from the engine and the engine speed gets reduced at several points. So okay, is the speed of the engine the same as the speed of the clutch? Yes. Guys, I'm asking you. Is the speed of the engine the same as the speed of the clutch? Yes, yes. Huh? Only when it's engaged. Okay. When it is engaged. When it is not engaged, of course. When it is engaged, is it the same as the engine? Yes. Yes, yes it is the same as the engine. And uh, is it actually covering? Yes, sir, it is covering. And if it, suppose if I go like this? Yes, sir, it is still covering. Okay. So this this clutch also has the same speed. So clutch components also also have got some weight. What about the gearbox? Now whether the gearbox components have the same speed as the engine? No. no. At least few shaft, maybe a day shaft, actually has the same speed of the engine. And you can say that there are some there are some components which have the same speed of the engine. And once you actually put it in fourth gear, third gear, or second or first. There are some components, depending upon which gear you put, they actually try to reduce speed. Suppose if it is first gear, what is the ratio of drive to driven in the first gear? Usual, usual gear ratios. The input shaft to output shaft. Now what is the gear ratio guys? 
I don't know the exact numbers of a specific vehicle. I'm saying generally. Huh? How much? Engine speed to? I'm asking engine speed to the speed of the drive shaft here, the output of the gearbox. What is it? Suppose if the engine runs four times, how many times does this? One time. One time. So we call it as four to four is to one, no? So that is in the case of the first gear. Maybe in the second gear it becomes three is to one. In the third gear it becomes two is to one. And then the maybe in the top, I mean that's in the fourth gear it becomes four one is to one, which means that the engine speed and the drive shaft speed will be the same. And if it is overdrive, this drive shaft will rotate faster than the engine. That is fifth gear or the sixth gear in some vehicles. Okay. So this is actually the ratio of the engine to this. So let us suppose if this is the ratio, let us call this ratio as gear ratio as GT. GT stands for gear ratio of the what does this T stand for? Transmission. Okay, let us call this as the gear ratio of the transmission. Then again, this drive shaft is rotating, and there is what is called as the differential here. Okay, the differential again tries to reduce speed because there is a pinion which is driving the crown wheel. Okay, so therefore again the speed gets reduced. How many times? Usually you have actually seen this in the previous laps. How many times it gets reduced? So again it's 3.7. Okay, again you can. Okay, approximately to 3. Okay, you okay, can call it as 3. So again, okay, so again say that finally the end of the drive shaft, maybe the drive line, divided by this end of the wheel. Suppose if the drive shaft rotates by 3 times, the wheel would rotate 1 time. So you can call this as 3, sorry, 4, sorry, 3 is to 1. And let us call this gear ratio as gear ratio of the now, now what do we call it as, guys? Any any suitable name that you can suggest? But this industry uses some name. Final drive ratio. Final drive ratio. That's fantastic. So they call it as F. Because this is the final reduction happening. They call it as GF. So there are actually two levels of reduction. One is GT, the transmission, and one is in the final drive GF. So here, for this equation to fit in again. So, now the traction force Ft, let me write it here, so that I can proceed with this. Is it visible guys here? Yes. Okay. Now the tractive force which was earlier written as Tw divided by Rw. Okay. I have to write this in terms of the engine torque. From the engine, as the speed gets reduced, will the torque get increased or decreased? <coughs> it is increased. So it will get increased by the number of times the speed gets reduced. Since we know that P is equal to N1 T1 is equal to N2 T2 and so on. Which means that if the speed gets reduced, Talking. now the torque has to increase by the same time to maintain the same, same power. power assuming that there is no loss in power ok so if this speed is getting reduced at two points one is by GT and one is by GF then the torque will increase by the same amount suppose if there is no final drive here if it is one is to one here then the torque would have increased simply by four times because the speed is getting reduced by four times and since the speed is getting reduced at two points. What do you think is uh, the total reduction? What do you think is the total reduction? Suppose if the engine, suppose if the engine rotates at 1,200 rpm, what would be the speed of the wheel, guys? In this case, 100, which means that the total reduction is 4 into 3, which is 12. Okay. Here, 1200 of the engine speed becomes 400 in the drive line, sorry, 300 in the drive line, 
and it becomes 100 in the wheel. So we get this 100 RPM. So you got this concept clear. And then this TW I can write it as GT multiplied by GF into TW divided by RW. So this is the formula for the tractive force when we have the reduction at both the transmission and the differential. But I am going ahead with the concept here that if a vehicle goes forward, it is not just this parts which are getting accelerated in this, there are also some rotating parts which would actually trying to accelerate and they offer resistance to rotation. So therefore, this torque Pw, sorry, this torque, guys I made a mistake here, what is this? I should have written this as Te. I should have written this as Te. Okay. So here, this definitely the torque in the engine would get definitely reduced. Now let us actually try to find out at, okay, at various places, I mean what are the various places at which the torque would get reduced. So for that I will try to draw one more diagram. So this is, uh, okay, I okay, can draw this as the engine, clutch, gearbox, drive line, these are the, these are the two front wheels and here you got the differential. So here in this differential, one half shaft goes to this, the other half shaft goes to this, and here you have this pinion, and here this wheel is here, and this wheel is here, and I'm only sh showing the drive line of a vehicle. This is engine, this is transmission, this is drive line, this is the whole system is connected to the wheel. Okay, now. Let us try to relate what happens to the engine torque TE by the time it comes to this point. Is it like the wheel torque is 12 times the engine torque depending upon this the reduction in the gearbox and the differential? It is not actually true because when you want to accelerate a vehicle, of course at constant speed this will be true. At constant speed, the torque will be true. I think it's true. But I'm saying, if you want to accelerate a vehicle, then the same torque in the engine will not be given to the wheel. I mean, it will not be given to the wheels multiplied. Now, this is the, now this is the product of engine torque and the GT plus, sorry, GT into GF. Okay? It's not true. So let us see why it is so. Now, let us say that the engine torque is say around, uh, okay, we'll take a whole number, which, mean, which is easier for me to solve. Most of the vehicles approximately these days, uh, now what is the, guys, please come with the values of some engine torques of some vehicles. I think 100 Newton meter is a very common torque these days. Even for very small cars, you've got 100 Newton meter. Huh? 300, XCV 300, Okay, XCV 300 itself is, is it? Can you, you can you, huh? can you show me this talk? Okay, so that's a quite huge talk. So he's saying almost around 300 Newton meter. I felt that's too high. So let us say that the engine talk, the engine talk at this point is, is 200 Newton meter. 200 Newton meter. And now. Whatever the torque they have given, they have actually, who gave this value to them? Who gave the XCV or any company this value of 200 Newton meter? They would have actually tested this in a dynamometer and then applying the anti-torque or the frictional torque, they would see whether this is able to produce that torque and they have actually tested it. They would have actually done this when the engine was running at some constant RPM, not while accelerating the engine. So, if an engine is producing a torque of 200 Newton meter, and if, suppose if you are trying to accelerate, 
then it has to overcome its own inertia. Suppose if the engine, suppose if the engine crankshaft is rotating like this, then all the components of the engine will produce an anti torque, which is actually equal to T is equal to I alpha. Okay. So by the time the by the time the torque comes here, by the time by the time the torque comes here after the clutch, or maybe you can say this is the torque available at the drive line. By the time the torque comes here, the torque in the drive line. Let me write it here. Now the torque in the drive line is it visible? Yes, sir. By the time the torque in the drive line, I mean the engine torque will be is equal to the torque in the engine mi minus I. Alpha of engine because the engine itself has to overcome its own inertia. Okay, so therefore that would be the torque available in the drive line. And what would be the torque available at the wheels? The torque available at the wheels will be equal to the torque which was available at the drive line minus. minus you can say so here basically you, I think uh, people use different so that is that is td minus i alpha of volt drive line and this inertia of this so inertia of the drive line so inertia of the drive line so finally you can say that what is available for the engine? Uh, now, what is available at the wheel is actually TD, and again this TD is this much. So you can say that by the time the torque comes to the wheel, it is TE, the, the original engine torque minus I alpha of engine and I alpha of the drive line, and one more thing I have left, and even the wheels they don't want to rotate because they have got mass. Mass means inertia. If you want to rotate that, you need to actually put some torque into it. So therefore, they also oppose it. So this is like this wheels. So all these oppose the rotations, and therefore, what is available at the wheel is the engine torque minus all these torques. Okay.